All right, kids, Ham and Cheese back here with you again today. And up on the bench today is the Frenzy, Frenzy, eh, hell, I don't know how you say it. Nobody else does either, but it doesn't matter. Uh, DPOS 350P, Digital Oscilloscope. This is the one everybody's been waiting for. They come out from this group. Um, this group, it's the FNIRSI. You've seen them in other videos. You've seen their other scopes, their 50 megahertz, their waveform generators, things like that. But this is how it came. Just came in the mail today. So wanted to show it off how it shows up in the box. Um, very well packaged. Nice clean packaging, everything like that. So we're going to go ahead and get it cut open and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so here it is out of the mailing package and you can see it's got the nice uh shrink wrap on it here you can tell by the halo from the ring light let's go ahead and cut this open and we'll see what we have inside and you can tell this is the uh king of the chineseum here but these things come very highly regarded in their lines, so hopefully this will be a good one. All right, packaging off. Let's take a look at the back first. And what you see there is, um, this gives you a rundown of some of the parameters. Um, we have the oscilloscope, the signal generator, the response analyzer, and the spectrum analyzer all inside. And then we have some other various parts as well that go with. So gives you the right idea there. If you want to take a spot there and put a stop on, you can. I'll hold it there for a second. Okay. So let's take a look at what's inside the box. As I said, scope, signal generator, response analyzer, and spectrum analyzer. Upon opening, it does come in a case, which they told us it would have the upgraded case with it. And there you see everything fits in the case. So let's take a look at what's in the case next. All right. First impression of the case, it's nice and solid. It's kind of rigid, not real cheap or chintzy. Like that nice logo finish on there. We open it up. Inside we find some basic components. Alligator clips with the BNC connector. Got a nice color manual here. Um, take a quick look at it. There's a warranty card there right at the back side. Just give you an idea. It's in Spanish. And it's in English as well. Gives you the operation guide. It gives you some a little bit of the waterfall there, what you're going to see on the screen, so on and so forth. There's your signal generator and all that good stuff. And we'll test that out here in a bit as well. Flip the screen. Got a real nice bag around the actual unit itself. But before we get into the unit, let's see what else we have in here. Test probes, a couple clips. There's a little bit of an idea of what's in there for the scope probe. USB-C powered, real nice heavy duty cable. And a very nice, huge charging block. And that's a 1.8, 3 amp, 12 volt charging block, as you can see right there. All right, let's take a look at this thing up close. All right, so here we have it out of the box. Already took the protective cover off, ready to go. Let's take a quick look at the unit itself. Got a nice screen there. I believe they say this is a seven and a half inch screen. Lay it out compared to a ballpoint pen. You can see the size comparison right there. Thickness wise, uh, roughly inch and a half, inch and three quarters, somewhere in there. Channel 1, Channel 2, there's the generation side. You can see those right there. These parts here, these are a plastic. They're kind of a little bit uh, slick, but still sturdy to hold on to, no problem. Flip to the side. This is all metal. You can hear it right here. 
connector to metal there. Power button, nice big power button. USB port, that's for charging and upgrades, of course. Flip it to the bottom, rubberized feet, nice big thick rubberized feet on it there. Same as the other side, only missing the buttons. Come to the back, we've got the flip out stand, so it stands up. Got a nice QR code to give us some information. Digital phosphor oscilloscope, as it says there. This is a cooling fan right here. Very whisper quiet, we'll hear in a second. And that's about the gist of it. Let's go ahead and power it up real quick. Goes through the boot up. Has some nice cool blue lighting there on the side. Let's go ahead and cut this light so we can see it in detail here. Nice clear blue light there. And a nice clean screen. That fan, as you can tell, very super quiet. All right, let's zoom down here a little bit, take a look at some of these functions. Okay, we're going to start in the corner here. We have our two channels here, left and right. Channel 1, channel 2, channel 1, channel 2. If you know what that's about, leave it in the comments. Maybe camera 1, camera 2 will give it to you. We have some time-based reflectivity there as well. We can see we can do various seconds. We can do it down to milliseconds, nanoseconds as well. Resolution rate, we can do 8-bit all the way up to 16 on the resolution. Trigger mode, we can single trigger. We can double or normal trigger it. We can do it on the rise for the edge or the falling edge. Two-channel trigger. And then our HF suppression. Here's our waveform generator. We're going to take a look at that in detail in just a second. And we can go fast moving or slow moving. Down the sides, these are auto. It'll auto set itself. You can hear it clicking in. Start and stop. We can increase, decrease. We can increase, decrease here as well. This DI just takes it away, hit the corner, comes back, and you got your battery indicator right there. If we look to the top part of this, we'll zoom in a little bit more for a little more clarity here. We have our system where we can configure, we can calibrate, USB connect, configuration settings, uh, very simple. We can save or read a configuration. We can take configurations from others, I would imagine, given that this has the ability to connect to the internet and everything else. USB connect, we can put it onto a monitor, as you can see right there, and then return. The calibration takes about 40 seconds. We're not gonna do that here. We have an automatic shutdown timer. We can do timer off, 15, 30, 45, or one hour. Languages. Four languages, A being Chinese at the top, English, Russian, and that's Portuguese. I think we said Spanish in the manual. That's actually Portuguese we were looking at there. We can do factory reset, and we can format the disk and save any clear stuff there as well. Function purposes, we can increase, decrease the waveform light, turn on and off color temperatures, turn the grids on and off, we turn off XY mode, off and on as you can see there. There's our colors, you can see the color change in the back. And we can take away the grid altogether if we choose to do so. We have a couple different things here we can calibrate from here as well. For the response analyzer, we can capture output. And we can do our spectrum analyzer, which you see right there. Okay. Measurements. Those are voltages. That's the time domain. Channels one and two. We can picture browse. We can do a browse of the waveforms that we save. So on and so forth. We can move our cursors around for X and Y axes. We can save it. We can screenshot it. And we can zoom in zoom out all right 
let's go ahead and take a look at the signal generator since that's the easiest to set up and takes the least amount of time and material to put forth. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do the quick demonstration of the signal generator now. Being that this is the easiest test, just to get an idea of how easy it is to use and what it comes out with, sounds like, so on and so forth. So we're going to go into our generator here. And before we start, we'll turn up the volume here on the 991. We're ready to go. Right now we have it at a frequency of zero. We're in sine wave. We'll leave it as such. Let's go ahead and make an adjustment to our frequency. We'll go with 7 megahertz. And just like that, we can hear it attenuate on 7 megahertz on the 991A. We'll cut it back to cut it out. All right, so simple as that. Very simple way to inject the signal. If you're using something where you need to input a signal for calibration, this would be extremely useful if you're inputting into an IF stage for uh, transistor radios or something, it's kind of overkill for that, but it would work very well for that. And you're going to use this as your injector point. In fact, we'll do this when we do a recap video of the ICOM 735 that we need to recap yet. And you'll get to see a whole lot more of this stuff. Um, one of the reasons why we bought this was for that purpose. We needed something that had more than 50 megahertz on the spectrum. With 350 megahertz, we're going to get there all day now. So, but we're just rambling, and that's a tomorrow project anyway. But there you have it, signal generation. Again, we talked about everything else here. Um, we'll do a quick look one more time at these ones at the bottom. Just give you an idea what they look like. Like I said, channel 1, channel 2. Channel 1, Channel 2, Horizontal, there you can see your time bases and your resolution rates and modes and of course your trigger rates as well. And then fast move, slow move, which we talked about. Alright, so there it is in a nutshell, the Fernisi, Frenzy, like I said, whatever the hell you call it. Nobody knows, it's good, it works, and it works very well, and we all know that these folks have been absolutely slamming it out of the park with their products. So if you're thinking about getting one, I would absolutely make the move. Um, it's portable. As you can see, it fits into the case. Take it on to go with you. Lend it out to a friend that needs a signal generator for something. Troubleshooting the field with it, whatever you need to do. All right. There it is, kids. Thanks for watching. 7-3. Link will be in the description as to where I got that directly. And it'll take you to the discounts and everything else to go for it. So, all right. Like I said, take care and we'll see you.